quickly welcome you, Louise. Thank you for taking the time to to chat to me. You can hear how much like more formal my voice is. Um, Louise, do you just want to <laughs> quickly? <laughs> do you just want to quickly introduce yourself? Um, who you are, what you do? Yeah, definitely. So I'm Louise Bruff. I am a graphic designer. I've been working for I don't know. I'm gonna say like eight plus years in the design industry and. I've been working part-time and freelancing the past couple of years, and this is my first year full-time freelancing. So, yeah, really exploring that this year, which has been great. Nice. Um, so take me through where you were. Obviously, the, the design business was just in its, like, first, like, full-time infant steps. But, like, take me through the, the situation that you were running into, you know, wanting to, to move to do your own thing. Like, what kind of obstacles and challenges um, were you encountering, I suppose? Yeah, it's hard to remember because I feel like I've come so far <laughs> since, since then. Um, and I can't even remember when I, like when we got in touch, but I definitely remember that I was getting a pretty good like influx through my website, but it was like people were contacting me for work and then I was taking on that work. So I wasn't really having any say in who I wanted to work with or what I wanted to be doing or what kind of clients, I wanted to be working with um so that was sort of where I was at and I was just like working a lot a lot of hours and yeah just taking on a lot <laughs> and just sort of thinking like is this right is this is this how it's supposed to be like what's yeah sort of going on <laughs> so do you feel like coming into profitable des- design was really like a oh there has to be a more effective way to operate hopefully this is it yeah I think it was I also think it was like I've tried to find like freelancing communities but it was really nice to be able to bounce not only just bounce stuff off someone being you but be able to sort of like reassure myself of what's working what's not working and head in the right direction Um, whereas it was really isolating on my own and just kind of being like is this right I hope this is right I'm not sure and it was really good I think one of the first things we did was really get clarity on the like the kind of life that I want to be living like who I want to be and what I want to be doing. And that exercise in itself has been so huge because everything has been formed from that of what do I want to be doing and who I do want to work with and what kind of life do I want to live? Um, so that's been, yeah, really huge. Nice. And that kind of, that kind of encroaches on the next question as well, but like take me through like what you've enjoyed in the experience in profitable designer so far from like, it might be like you were talking about there, like training modules or, how you've utilized the the coaching calls. Yeah, I think I really it was really good having the like the coaching mo- like the training modules because I especially for that section of it, I could just like jump in and work on my own pace. And sometimes I'm not necessarily that consistent. So I'll just kind of like really be in it and then kind of dip away a bit and then be back in it. And it was really good because that was there when I wanted to. Um, and so I really liked the modules, but then it was so good being able to have the training sessions because <laughs> just as, like keep myself accountable and like keep chatting with you. And because when we'd have our conversations, things would come up that I wasn't necessarily anticipating. Like sometimes I'd just come into the call with no agenda and then I'd come out with so much. So that was also really interesting. And just, I feed off that motivation as well, which like keeps me going. Nice. The, I, find, I find a lot of people in the program do exactly that they kind of just use the calls as like accountability um so do you feel like just the regular contact just kind of keeps things top of mind and and allows you to kind of go through the content quicker yeah and i think like knowing that i can and it feels on me and it also feels um really approachable like it doesn't feel like it's so easy i was like book a call and then we have a chat <laughs> it doesn't have to be like a big thing you can just like book it in and have a chat and there's no pressure for me to yeah have to come with a purpose or problems or anything and that's definitely happened a few times actually you've just been like so here i am yeah. <laughs> there's been no agenda <laughs> uh, you're like okay, i need to keep myself moving <laughs> uh, um what do you feel like has been the biggest aha moment that you've had since being engaged in the program Yeah, it's a good question. I think discovering my, like being able to charge rates that are reflective of 
my skill set and my experience. Like that confidence has been a really big part of it. I don't know like if it's been an aha moment, but it's definitely been super influential because I just wasn't, I don't think I was charging my worth. And there was so much like nervousness around money and things like that. And the conversation with clients. And now the approach just seems so much more simple. And it's something I'm not really afraid of talking about money. And it feels like having the confidence in that area of it feels really, really good. And then just like being able to, I think the aha moment is like not what I, I don't have to work really hard. It's like I can work really smart, which is really good because like at the moment I'm not working five days a week freelancing, but I'm still like bringing in a really good amount, but I'm also working on other projects that I want to work on. So I think that was probably a really big aha moment that it's like, you don't have to just slog away really hard and long nights. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Um, so and again, that kind of ties into the next one, but like, take me through some of the actual specific <laughs> results that you have seen implementing the thinking and the strategies that we've gone through. Yeah, I think like a lot of it was like, I've pretty much just gotten rid of tiny little jobs, like things that would just come my way. It's like, that's not worth my time. That's not, it's not worth it. Being able to like, look at, really look, look at clearly what my proposition is and how um, different brands fit into that and how I used to like think I was a jack of all trades kind of thing. And that was a good thing. But now it's really looking at like what I can offer people and what I do want to offer them and putting it in a really like, hmm, what am I trying to say? I'm talking a lot. <laughs> Wait, what was the question again? Um, the kind of results that you've seen implementing oh, yeah. thinking and the strategy. So take us through like, like what, what do you consider now? the kind of project that you might've done in the past, like what do you consider the kind of, I'm not even hopping out of bed in the morning for that kind of number I need to be like, what's, yeah. what would you say that your range is at the moment? Like, is it from like a project value standpoint? I think now it's sort of more going into like the like 10 to $20,000 kind of range for projects. And I definitely just kind of got rid of like the few hundred dollar projects, unless it's something I'm like really, really just like, I don't know, super passionate about or something like this would be fun for me, like an illustration. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely working towards the higher end of stuff. Well, higher end for me. Um, and that's been a really big step as well because I've been able to have less clients and then give more them more attention and more energy and stuff as well. Nice. And I'm like, the the really important thing to to establish here is that you're insanely good at what you do and you did come into the program with a lot of massive runs on the board. And I think more so what, what you've been able to do is understand how you were able to create such value for like, you know, those past really awesome clients and, and how you were always going beyond design anyway. But I think maybe the, from my experience, like what, what you've been able to do in the program, it's really understanding everything beyond design that you were doing and now now calling that out at the front of your marketing and sales, I suppose. Yeah. And it's also been a really big confidence thing for me because I was so focused on the execution of things. And I was like, I can give them this and I can give them this and I can give them this. And then I think I really started to discover how much I can offer them on a deeper level of like finding out who they are as a brand and those like less tangible things. I didn't, realize um how important they are and how much they really do offer people like they really do help so yeah that's definitely been a really huge huge change of mindset and way nice. of working definitely um so taking all that into account like how has this changed the way that you look at your design business moving forwards <laughs> good question <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you don't have to answer it. Just good question. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Good question. It's funny, like trying to cast my mind back to think of where I was because I feel like everything that I've kind of learned now just is there. And it's like, it would make so much sense. It just makes sense. Not sense not to do it. Blah, 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 blah. Mm. <laughs> um, but I think, I think now I think it's really exciting thinking about really who I want to work with and what I want to, what, like what I care about and how, what kind of life I want to have. So it's like now I can find the brands and the people or the projects that I want to work with. And then I can make that possible. 
Um, yeah, and then doing the like side project as well, like th- being able to have that, like have it all feels really good. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think rather than just like taking in everything that I, <laughs> that was coming my way, I can now really choose what I want and feel so much more confident about, yeah, charging nice. to my, yeah. A lot of people in the program have that, like what, what we're about is not like here, here's like, just this like mindless design work that we can get paid really well for, but it's more like, how do we build like a, it, hopefully this is how you see, see it as well, mm-hmm. but it's like, how do you build a core value vertical that's always going to be providing like decent work and, and good revenue. And then that allows us to free up the time to, to do other stuff that we're like super passionate about some of it, not generating revenue. You've obviously got, you know, um, a new incense brand coming out. Feel free to do a shameless plug for it. I'm happy for that. <laughs> when it's launching like in what a week here, but it's like working on love, love and passion projects as well. Like having the flexibility to do that. So you can be doing a lot of cool stuff, but you're still driving revenue as well. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I'm, um, yeah, I was going to add to that. And then I had a mind blank. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Um, all right. Well, that, let's wrap it up there, Louise. But thank you so much for your time and, um, and we'll chat really soon. Yeah, cool. Thanks.